Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Disclaimer, this recording is not intended to be utilized as medical advice or a medical diagnosis. If you think you're in need of medical attention or treatment, please seek it immediately. This recording will also contain sensitive subjects such as binging and purging, weight and depression. Please listen at your own discretion and do what you think is best for you. Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. Today we're going to talk about gentle decision making. A big factor I see with people in recovery is that they do everything, all the work required to not binge and purge. They're journaling, they're doing emotional management, they are trying to process their emotions, they're trying to pause, they're trying to do a lot of things. But then when it comes time to making the decision factor of actually not binging and purging, they then fail at that and they don't make the decision. And of course, because they don't feel better, they will inevitably binge and purge, right? They'll just go with the flow. And I was talking to a client today who she had just gone a whole month without binging and purging and being really, you know, quite good eating intuitively, honoring her hunger signals. And then her common phase is that she will then dip into a low period. She just went four days, you know, with like tons of binging and purging and feeling really down and low about that. So we're talking about, okay, like, what do you want to do to get out of it and to move forward? Because this is what happens. You can't change that. And we were talking about how she is doing a lot of things, but it's a decision making factor that she is missing. And she felt really resistant to the idea of saying no to herself or telling herself, no, we're not doing that anymore. We're not binging today. We're not purging. That's not an option. It felt very tough love to her. And I get it. I can be, I'm a lot more of a, I don't want to say I'm a tough love person, but I tend to respond a lot more to bluntness and maybe like uh, just frank, tough love sort of situations, like people keeping it real with me. Not to say this person doesn't like keeping it real, but you know what I mean? Like a little bit more of a like firm stance on things. But for her, she seems, she felt really resistant to telling herself, I don't want to just say no. Like, I feel like that's suppressing something in me. I'm resistant to that idea because what if me just ignoring it and continue moving forward uh, and saying like, no, 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 we're not going to go there is actually suppressing my needs. And what was, and she's like, I think investigating it's really important, which is why I don't want to just completely bypass it altogether. But she said, the problem is when I investigate it, then I get kind of roped into it and then I binge. So for you guys out there that don't really like the idea of just like deciding and saying no, which of course, that's not just what I teach people. I'm not, let's just like decide and it's fine. But if you're resistant to this idea of restricting yourself from binging, then this episode may be really helpful for you. Because I told her, what would you say to a child who really wanted to have ice cream right now, but it was not an appropriate time to have ice cream? Maybe you guys were doing something. Maybe you couldn't have access to ice cream. He had to wait a while. What would you say? And that got her thinking in a gentle, compassionate, but firm stance of how to talk to him because if a child wanted ice cream but couldn't have it for whatever reason you wouldn't say no stupid stop asking about ice cream (laughs) sucks to suck like you're not gonna have um, ice cream right now you wouldn't do that you would first of all like I was just listening to a parent seminar the other day too um not because I'm planning on being a parent anytime soon it was just interesting But what you're supposed to do when you talk to a child, what good parenting supposedly is, is first of all, acknowledging the child's wants and needs and letting that child process that emotion. So not immediately trying to make it okay. For example, if they're having a meltdown about the ice cream, you don't want to be like, just just stay calm, just stop crying, that sort of stuff. You want them to process that, you want them to feel their emotions. You also want to let them know, like, I hear you, I see you. And you can even validate saying, like, it does suck that you can't have ice cream right now. It really does. I'm so sorry that you're upset and it makes sense that you're upset, but we still can't have the ice cream. And saying it from a place of love and compassion. So, and also like, likewise, when you're trying to get yourself to a child to do something, maybe they don't want to do, like, maybe they don't want to take a shower or they don't want to, um, 
they don't want, maybe they don't want to use the restroom. I don't know. I don't know what it is that children don't want to do, but they don't want to clean the room. They don't want to do their homework. But as a parent, you know that those things are really important for them to do for their eventual survival in society and functioning in society. They have to be able to do those things in order to to get along with other people. And so you being restrictive and firm with them isn't an act of suppressing. It's actually really trying to be helpful to them and be like, you need these skills to survive. But if you can say it from a place of acknowledging that even though they need to do it, it does kind of suck sometimes, their feelings are totally valid and allowing them to process those emotions and then also being there for them and letting them have their emotional experience, even when you're holding firm in that decision. And then lastly, what I was heard that was so interesting to me was that when children are freaking out, even though your initial reaction is to freak out with them, if you can stay calm while they're having a fight or freaking out or something like that, or throwing a temper tantrum, they will then start to react to your calmness and see that you're not freaking out. And then maybe they don't have a reason to freak out as well. And they can start to self-regulate and calm down. But with ourselves, whenever we have a binge urge, we usually just freak out, right? We just be like, oh my God, I can't handle this, blah, blah, blah. But if you can even almost treat that and observe that as a different person in your brain, a different type of um, thought in your brain, that's not actually you. And then try to remain calm and show your brain, like, even though we're having this emotional process, I can calm myself down. I can process this emotion. And then I can be gentle and firm with myself and say, no, but I love you. No, but this is why. And explain your reasons to yourself why you don't want to do it. And then make a firm decision, but a firm decision from love and understanding. That's a much gentler way to still decide not to binge. Because when people, and and then this person was very receptive to that method because it is, it's a lot more like you not binging isn't suppressing something. It is certainly an act of love for yourself and it's a kind thing to do. But if you're just being super dismissive of it, which sometimes is really helpful for people. Sometimes I told her this and she laughed because it's not the language she uses, but it's like sometimes the urge to binge is just bullshit, right? Sometimes an urge to binge is you just a habitual thing in your brain. Like it just, you're bored. So boop, we're bored. This is what we do. We want to binge. Let's get some food. Sometimes that's total bullshit. And all you have to do is like, no, we're not going to do that. Move on. But a lot of times an urge to binge is some sort of emotional coping mechanism going on. It's some sort of response to whatever's happening right now, whether you're stressed or bored or don't have anything to do, or you're feeling sad. Something's usually in the background that's creating it. Another example, I had a client um, this week who actually had a really, really good week, uh, followed by um, a last week, a week previously where she had a really bad day. And the main reason that she was binging on that day was because of being so mean to herself about the stuff she should have been doing and should have been, she felt like she should have been working, should have been doing a lot more stuff. And then this week, lo and behold, when she really honored her rest, listened to her needs, communicated her needs with her partner and um, was honest about it instead of saying you should be just able to handle it all. And then she ate adequately enough. She, and then also when she did have urges, recognizing them and going and doing something else instead and giving herself what she needed instead of binging, like relaxation or rest, lo and behold, she had a week that was not no binging at all. She did really well and felt really good and really energetic and really clear. In anything in life, you ultimately have to make choices in what you need to do. The problem with binging and purging is that you can do all the things that you're supposed to do to supposedly make you feel better. But after you do those things, sometimes the urge goes away, but there's usually still a lingering urge. And she was kind of approaching urges from the mindset of, we'll do everything we need to, but then we'll just see how it goes. And then I kind of asked her, if you invited to me to the movies? And I said, you know what? Well, I think I'm pretty open on that day. I don't have, I don't have anything going on for sure, but I'll let you know how it goes. I'll let you know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes on that day. And maybe I'll be able to make it. It's very clear that I don't actually want to go and I'm, I'm leaving the door open to not go. And I know sometimes in social settings that is acceptable. Like sometimes you just don't feel like it. But that is the same situation when she's binging or trying not to binge and saying, we'll do this action and then see how it goes. You're kind of like, it means you're not committed to the action 
um, you're, it means you're not committed to not binging. You're just kind of being like, if the stars align, then I will stop binging. If I feel completely fine and ready to stop binging and I don't no longer want to binge, then yeah, I'll totally stop binging. And that's, that's the hard part about it is that sometimes you have to not binge even when you want to binge. And that's when taking a gentle decision-making process, a firm yet loving decision-making process that I described when you would with a child is really necessary because otherwise, if you don't decide, you're always going to go to the default, which is binging. You do ultimately have to make decisions and push yourself to do that. And I posted on Instagram this Sunday, it's Monday while I'm recording this, but I had that client that had a really good week. She said, (laughs) she said a quote that I am paraphrasing. I didn't record it or anything, but um, she said that making that decision, walking away from a binge and doing, deciding to do something else, it really feels like that final rep in the gym. It's really hard and you don't think you're going to be able to do it. But because you're committed to finishing that set, you get that leg up and you do the leg extension, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, maybe you squat down something, you do it and then you grind it out, especially like if it's a really hard set, like in, in squats. And when I do squats, I love heavy squats. And there's always a sticking point when you're doing the weight where you feel like, there's no way that this is going to go up. The weight's not going to go up. And so you literally, your body stalls out for a second in the squat. You're like, you know, parallel and, and trying to push up and it's not going, but then you have to wait one, two, maybe even three seconds. And sometimes obviously like you physically can't do it, but a lot of times what happens is that the weight starts to slowly go up again and then you push it up and it's done. So the final rep is, so like you will feel when you're making this decision, there's going to be some resistance. You might have to grit your teeth a little bit. And then once you actually do it, actually say, put the food down, don't go to the store, delete the the app that you're ordering from, right? Delete the order that you were making, walk away. Um, my client in particular, she um, walked away, made herself some hot chocolate and then sat down on the couch and watched Netflix. Um, Whatever it is you're doing, you get yourself to that second location and you decide, no, we are not doing this. And I love you, but we're not doing this. Compassionate, but we're not doing this. Gentle, but we're not doing this. Then it's over and you can breathe. So if you're wondering how to be kind to yourself and make decisions and almost restrict yourself, you know, but from a place of, good goodness. Like there's a good reason to be doing it. Try to think of, try to talk to yourself how you would a child or discipline yourself, how you would a child be gentle with yourself, how you would a child like today with all the calls that I have going on, I'm not sitting here saying to myself, Jacqueline, you have to do the podcast because otherwise you you just have to, like, there's no other reason you can't get out of it. You just have to do the podcast and you have to go to all the calls um, because that's the type of life you live. Sucks to suck, Jacqueline. No, I'm saying I have clients that I really love that are looking forward to speaking with me and are also needing to hear from me so that we can work on solutions together to recover. And that's why I'm going to show up even though I'm tired. And then also I'm going to record this podcast because it's important to the people listening out there and it will help someone today. And that's what I'm going to do it when I'm going to do it. And it's also important to my business. That's why I'm going to show up in my course on the Facebook group today and make a really amazing post and interact in there, even though I'm tired, because I know that there are people that um, are working inside there towards recovery. And it's important that I show up to them. It's important for my life that I show up to them. It's my livelihood. It's my business and people, people's lives will be changed if I show up. So that's the reasons that I'm doing it. And I know at the end of the day, it'll be better for me to do that than it would for me to lie in bed all day. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And that's how I approach my schedule and my discipline with gentleness. Um, gentle, but firm decision-making and compassionate decision-making instead of fear-based decision-making instead of punishment-based decision-making, you know? So anyway, I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. I hope you can be gentle yet firm with yourself this weekend. And remember that nothing will happen unless you start taking actions towards it. So if you're sitting there and you've been binging and purging for days, 
and you really feel like you're just in a loop and you're going into tomorrow thinking, I just hope it won't happen today. You need to start making a, a plan and start making des decisions to change the results of that day. It won't just organically happen, but you have all the power to make it happen. So please, please know that you can make a change in your life today. Okay. Never give up on yourself, my friends. Thank you for listening. Bye.